border expert Tom Trento exposes treasonous activity, destruction, and atrocities at the southern border on this episode of United Patriots Uprising with Gary Benford. I'm your host, Gary Benford. Thanks for joining us. This podcast is available at RadioInfluence.com or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Hope you'll subscribe to it, leave a rating and a review, and be sure to tell your friends about the show. Treasonous activity? Destruction? Atrocities? Really? And if so, why aren't the mainstream media and our politicians on both sides of the aisle talking about and dealing with this? Sadly, they won't. But my guess will. So let's get into it. He's a border expert, a highly skilled debater and a dynamic public speaker who has earned degrees in law enforcement, theology and philosophy from three different institutions. He's a co-author of the book Sharia, The Threat to America, and a producer of the new 10-episode documentary series, Death County and the River of Broken Dreams. The director of the United West and CEO of Defend the Border, I welcome to the show Mr. Tom Trento. Tom, how are you? Hey, finally we get together, Gary. I'm doing great. Finally, your whole crew, you know, between Michelle Terrace, Tom Holman, and Van, everybody, you know, uh, 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 Claire Lopez, and I'm just waiting, and it finally got you uh, off the border long enough or out of wherever you've been to uh, get you in front of a, a microphone. And who knows? We, you may get thrown off the air permanently after we do this show. Who knows? Well, you know what? If I haven't been thrown off yet, it's going to be hard considering the type of guests I get put on. But the type of guests I put on are the type of guests that in a country that has lost its mind, these are the type of people that will get you thrown off the air because you're going to speak truth. And uh, along those lines, before we get into the film, your organizations and what you do, I want to bring the listening audience to the southern border right up close and personal. Please tell us two things about the conditions and situations there that Americans need to know about that they have no clue about. The two words that uh, all your listeners should um, get out of this is treason and um, a destruction of uh, America. Um, this open border is a treasonous activity on the part of Biden. And uh, if it's not controlled, it will destroy America as we know it. It'll be a different country. Okay. Now, as you say, so you said one word is treason and the other word is? Destruction. Okay, please explain to people the destruction, because to me, Tom, this isn't rocket science. If you leave a border open, anybody can come across. Little old ladies can come across. People that want to work can come across. But terrorists can come across. Drug lords can come across. uh, Disease can come across. Uh, Everybody knows about the Trojan horse. You know, come on. And what I find interesting, they want to close up, up, shut us down for, you know, the virus and all their little stuff. Yet they leave the border open. I I thought they're so concerned about this virus and everything. Well, I'm glad we have a little time to, to work through this stuff. Uh, you, you used two words when you started. Um, you said uh, lost their mind. I guess that's three words, lost their mind. And you used the word truth. I wrote my master's thesis on the concept of truth. And unequivocally, if you follow the, the canons of logic, Aristotelian logic, you can definitively without question, conclude the left, the people supporting Joe Biden and his policies have lost their logical mind. And what is that? What are the what is the upshot of that? Well, they're not dealing with a a coherent and consistent framework of ideas. The consequences are that of that are ultimately destruction of whatever they, if they were the pilots of your airplane and they function like they're functioning on the border, I wouldn't fly in it because it's going to crash. Pretty simple. Right. Well, see, you said something about truth, but let's think about this. To me, the truth of the matter is 
they haven't really lost their minds. They're just doing what the Marxist communist plan has always been. This is how you take over a country. And and this is intentional. That border is openly intentional. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they want. They want voters and they want other things. You know, there are people that want child trafficking. There are people that want what's going on and fentanyl and things to come across the border. So what I think we have to let America know, this isn't an accident. This is a, actually on purpose, right? Well, you make a, an extremely good point, and I need to qualify for your for your listeners. When I say they lost their mind, I am assuming, and I, I won't assume any longer, I'll state that there is a definitive benchmark that exists in the United States. Once you go beyond that, then you have lost your mind. And here's what I mean. That benchmark is we have to think logically and we have to think because we are the people of the United States of America and we're grounded and founded in a series of documents that we pledge allegiance to. Once we leave that benchmark, then we have lost our mind as it relates to maintaining the principles of a constitutional republic. So if we go over to the other side, the dark side, where our mind is different, then what kind of mind do we have? Well, you hit the nail on the head. We have a um, a, a neo-Marxist kind of um, hipster philosophy being implemented. And let's go to Marx for a minute. Karl Marx was infamous for his view that there ought not be any um, personal ownership of mm, private property, property, property right? Well, just extra- Owned by the state. The state. Well, ex- extrapolate for a moment that concept, and he also applied it to whether or not countries have the right to have borders, definiate, delineating, and defining their private property, public property. And it's very easy to make the jump over to say, well, a country shouldn't have borders. And that's the globalist mentality. You lose your mind when you become a globalist. That's the globalist mentality that's taking place. But you're right. These people haven't lost their mind. They adopted a new mind that's antithetical to George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, Gary, and Tom's mind, completely opposite. And it's antithetical to God because God is about freedom and they they're about bondage. Now, you know, you were ready to say something. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I haven't brought religion into this yet. That's I'm not right. That's not religion. See, God is not religion to me. God is God. Religion is man made. I haven't brought God into this yet. There's a whole nother. Now, once once the folks argue at this level, uh, you know, you could you could ground the whole thing. In the uh, the Imago Dei, the fact that we have in us the image of God, that's a bulletproof argument that, uh, you know, we can't lose. If you know what you're talking about, if you're a Christian in particular, you know you, why you believe, and, and you're a constitutional um, uh, a- advocate, you can't lose an argument in this. this in fact, we're not even allowed to argue anymore because we're racist, we're lunatics, we're this, we're that. But that's the world we're in, Gary. I hear you, Tom. And the reason I brought that in is because whether they want to admit it or not, this country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. In fact, the founding father said it was founded not only on Judeo-Christian principles, but on a gov- on, on a group of people that were going to live morally. Because the Constitution is only for a moral person. They, 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 they didn't create a Constitution for immoral people because obviously it couldn't operate the way it does. And when you look at all your Ivy League schools like Harvard and Princeton and Yale and everything, go back and look at the name, what the names of the school, what their, what their, what their (laughs) crest was. They're all religious schools when it started out. All that is gone, but God will not be mocked. So I have to go there. Okay. Are you surprised how much is go? This stuff is being hidden from the public. Not only by the disingenuous mainstream media, but by politicians on both sides of the aisle about what's going on down at that border. Yeah, that's that's what's very, very disheartening. Um, On July 13th of this year, Congressman Troy Nels uh, invited us. And that was put together by our director, Gary Burgard, who's an amazing director. Um, He lives in Texas. Congressman Troy Nels uh, sponsored 
a showing of Death County to uh, the U.S. Congress. And uh, even though there was uh, some late votes, Congressman Nels couldn't get his own Texas Republican. Forget about the Democrats. They ain't coming near this subject. Uh, Nels couldn't get his own delegation, Republican Congress people from Texas to come to the screening of a movie featuring Tom Holman shot in Texas. Unbelievable. Well, why? Okay, why is this being kept from us? Not just your film, but why is the whole border thing? It's amazing that you watch and you look at the filming and you look Fox News and Newsmax every now and then all over the Internet. You can see what's coming across. You can see what's going on. And it's amazing to me that we're allowing this. Why? Well, the Democrats have an epithumia, Greek term, a lust, what? an undying, mm-hmm. unmitigated desire for power. And um, they realize their their political philosophy, their policies are not working. So they are adjusting. They believe they found uh, the Achilles heel of the um, Judeo-Christian conservative movement, abortion. And you saw what just happened in Ohio, mm-hmm. that big rally. So they think abortion can defeat the Republicans. And you see it all over the all over the place. How come? How come they're not using their political view of the border to ram and jam us like they are with abortion? Because they know it's a losing argument for them. I don't care who you are. When you look at thousands of crazy military age men running across, giving a finger to the flag, cursing, "Viva Mexico, Viva Uruguay." You go, what is this? What the hell is this? And uh, the Democrats don't want to lead with the abortion. So they are in cahoots with the techno corporate world and the media. And as a result, I got I got a uh, <laughs> the room I'm in, the, the Alexis or whatever is talking. Shut up, Alexis or whatever your name is. Uh, she listened to you. Name? Huh? Is it Alexis? Plug in the Echo device. Echo. Shut up, Echo. All right. There you go. Echo. Um, so they're not hey, leading. Try, try that with Biden, Harris, Pelosi, uh, shift in the and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. judges Shut up, and all these, these yeah. crazy. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. That'd be, that'd be good. That'd be a good, good magical superhero power. The, look, they know the border issue is not a winning issue for them. So they suppress it and the media suppresses it. But when there's something crazy, they may cover it for 30 seconds or so. Um, now, why? Why? Well, they need to have power in 2024. The border's a losing issue for them. They suppress it. But at the same time, they get that clown. He's an absolute clown, Alejandro Mayorkas, the head there of security. Go. And the border is sealed. It's closed. All they did, Gar, was, was open the existing portals for entry wider to let anybody in. And they say, oh, look, legal entry. They're just not even applying the law to people entering there. Why? They want to, first of all, they want to control all these brown people like they did in the 1860s. And they know if they subjugate the brown people to the the needs of the Democrat Party, they will forcibly, by coercion, have a voting block starting in about five years for the next 30 years. Yeah. Tom, you know, watching what's happened at the border, the one thing that surprises me that Americans aren't understanding. Back in the day, when you came to this country, you came because you wanted to be an American. You came because you wanted to assimilate and you just could. I know so many people that could not wait until they became an American citizen, couldn't wait until they could say the Pledge of Allegiance and it mattered. But when you're watching people coming across now, they're coming across with the flag of this country, the flag, and they're coming over these huge flags of another. Wait, where's the American flag? What, 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 what flag's that? What has that you got? What are you draping yourself in coming across our border? This is, this is please explain this to me out. Why people aren't looking and saying there's something wrong with this picture. 
Well, as you know, uh, uh, the United West, and we started back in, in 2006, and and we made our bones uh, on uh, um, uh, on fighting the jihadis um, and, and aggressively confronting them, exposing them, however we could legally. Um, that was was what we did. And uh, about uh, three or four or five years ago, uh, we saw, and we go back and forth to Israel to study anti-terrorism stuff. We saw the southern border was becoming a sieve that was very open to evil people from Islamic countries coming in to hurt us. So we said, all right, we got to shift our uh, focus there, do that, and um, and and start uh, exposing all of this. So we said, if and we ran into Tom Holman two years ago and a book he had just written. And um, I said, Tom, if people knew what you knew, we can we can close this. We want to do a story about you. We've got to take the truth, let people see it. And then they'll go, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So we made the first of 10 episodes. And when people watch it, they go, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And then we enlist them in our grassroots movement to educate Americans to vote intelligently for pro-border security politicians in November 2024. That's the comprehensive nature of what we're doing. But it went back to solving the problem of how do we tell the people that Mexicans and others are running across the border, waving their own flags, planting their flag, not to assimilate, but Mm -hmm. to dominate in some capacity. There you go. So let's talk about that. Tell us about the making of the documentary, which you and your team produce uh, at Defending the Border and Save Lives, which is a nonprofit national grassroots project established to raise awareness, as you just said, about border safety through online and in-person events and videos. Tell them about it, because everybody knows Tom Holman's been on the show three times. Obviously, most people would know him as the former head of ICE, and uh, he's been very involved involved down at the border. And, and tell us why you thought his story would be something that would resonate with people and and hopefully open a door here and close the border there. Yeah, it was, it was a, a providential. You as a believer understand the term providential. Uh, I was asked to speak at an event, Michelle Terrace's event, uh, September 2021 for the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And um, ironically, I contracted COVID. It is a real Virus. Mm-hmm. Um, it was. It had some, you know, crazy symptoms. Um, I got it a second time too. I was not vaccinated, and I'm so glad I wasn't. But uh, a month later, October of 2021, because I missed the September engagement, they asked if I'd moderate for Tom Holman, and um, I said sure. So he gave his presentation. I moderated. We hit it off. I got his book. I read his book. And he struck me as a guy, and this is what strikes me about President uh, Trump, um, a guy who loves America, mm-hmm. absolutely loves America. And, um, and we'll put God, country, God, family, country in that order. And, and that's the people I hang around with. So I said, Tom, your story, you were a beat cop in upstate New York. New York, right. Yeah. You got on the border and 35 years, you you started working for President Reagan. You worked for six presidents. Mm-hmm. Obama gave you a award. Trump gave you a award. You got a Hollywood movie story. Nah, rah, you know him, effing yeah. rah, 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 body, whatever. I said, we could we could take you, man, make you a star. And why? We don't he goes, I don't want to be a star. I said, your story needs your to story, be a story, right? right. Yeah. And I went and got my good friend, uh, Chris, who's a filmmaker. And um, and we went down to uh, the Texas border for several weeks and Washington, D.C. And the script was simple. An investigative report exposing Joe Biden's open border policies. So we cover uh, a whole area, obviously, the, the drug smuggling, drug trafficking, uh, smuggling is taking an item from one country, bring it to another. You drop it off. Trafficking is taking an item from one country, Mexico, bringing it to the United States and making money from it. You, It's recurring revenue. And, and we exposed 
in Death County and the River of Broken Dreams, the fact that um, the cartels, Gary, listen to this, this is crazy. The cartels were doing about a billion dollars a year in drug trafficking, dumped their fentanyl, uh, dumped their cocaine, and boom, that drug is used up, it's gone, you gotta put some more. Then they realized, we can take a little 12, 13, 14 year old girl from Guatemala mm -hmm. and some some screwball guys will use her at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, pay for her, pay for her at two o'clock in the afternoon, pay for her at six o'clock, pay for her at midnight. The cartel said these little things, their chattel, their their tools, their recurring revenue. They make us money more than drugs the cartels are now doing because of Biden's policies. Trump and Holman stop this. They're now doing $1 billion a month in human sexual trafficking of children. This is terrible. It, it, it's absolutely terrible that this is going on. And, um, you know, we had part of your crew on recently had Claire Lopez on and she was talking about the rape trees where, the, you know, if they rape people, they were hanging the panties on trees and stuff. And and talking about it's a two way thing. Not only, you know, you're, you, you say that the story not only tells about the people that are coming in illegally, but the hordes that don't make it, that are buried someplace. Uh, what what when you really started to get involved with what's going on at that border. What was it that you didn't know that you found out? Was there something that really, really surprised you about the, the horrific stuff going on down there? Uh, yeah, I was surprised. Uh, the, the trip, one of the trips was uh, uh, 2019, I think, to uh, uh, Cochise County in uh, Arizona, um, Sheriff Mark Daniels, and I took uh, four or five of my guys, and we embedded with him for about a week, and um, and they they cover 83 miles on the border in Arizona, and we made a bunch of videos on it. Um, you have me standing in front of uh, you know the, the the big fence, the big wall, and looking at it, and I go, there's nobody can get over this thing, man. This thing is gigantic. Nobody can get over it. Look, Trump even welded uh, sheet metal, you know, steel on top of it. And as I'm talking, I'm moving to the right. And then I go, well, maybe they don't have to. And I take a step, and there's no no wall anymore. There's just not there. Right. It's just a, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I go, you got to be kidding me. And there's so many porous areas. Number one, that was mind boggling with all the money we've spent in the Middle East and, you know, the, now the Ukraine. The other issue that jumped out was the innovative, never die, never get up, fight the friggin' federal government, screw them, we're going to protect our people, attitude of the border sheriffs as they innovatively created very amazing technique to catch these these guys and uh, either lock them up or deport them for good and, and keep them out of coming in their sectors. It was refreshing to see um, what, what these good cops can do when the federal government is telling them not to do anything. I hear you. How dangerous is it? I, I, se several people have asked me to come down there. Several people. Uh, I just got asked... Uh, Recently, Ann Vandersteel said, come on down. I'm like, I don't want to go down there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what is <laughs> among it? Claire, you know, oh, come on down. We're down here. Yeah, okay, I'll see you there. Uh, no, really, all jokes aside, what, how dangerous is it? Well, because hold on before, because I, as I said, I've had a lot of people on who from different organizations who have been down there and they've talked about the bodies and the cartels and the machine gun, and the cartel and avoiding the cartels and the guys in the Jeeps with the guns and all this stuff. Well, if you're in Long Island, uh, most likely you're going to fly. So you gonna have to go to LaGuardia or JFK or something. Where would you fly out of? I, I'd, I could fly out of Kennedy or JFK, uh, Kennedy or LaGuardia. doesn't matter. Well, if you had a little extra time, you wanted to go to Manhattan for dinner or something. No, no, no. I'll, I'll just come down here because I, I love Mexican food. So, Well, if you went to Manhattan for dinner, your life is more in danger in Manhattan than if you went with Ann Vandersteel on her crew. With, on her really? Crew. Oh, really? She's got she's got 20 guys with uh, heavy, heavy, heavy uh, 
weaponry around them. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What does that say if you have to? I, look, I used to be in the music business. I used to manage a recording artist, and I, I had contemporary jazz flautists and some R&B singers. And a couple rappers came and asked me to check them out. And I went to the Apollo Theater to, to a concert, <laughs> And I'm backstage. There are more guns back there than the police department. And I said, this is not for me. Uh, if she's got 20. <laughs> but, you yeah, well, look, to be. but yes, there are. You can't go walking alone at certain areas day or night. Of course not. But um, uh, the trips that people are taking to show VIPs, like you'd be a VIP, um, there's there's very, very little danger. Now, sadly, um, you you can't work with the feds because they they have prohibited that. But um, yeah, any of us can get you in with a sheriff's department and you would travel with the sheriff for the day and do an interview and all that. You'd be very, very safe and you should do it. It makes great. Uh, it's a great interview. OK, now. That aside, how dangerous is it for people like you and Claire and Ann and Tom and everybody that's really got the boots on the ground? Yeah, if you're if you're screwing around at night, it's very dangerous um, again, certain areas, uh, daytime, um, not that dangerous because, uh, you go normally to the areas that are under patrol. Uh, you don't go into the areas where there's 30 miles or 20 miles between patrols. That makes no sense to do that. You'll run into, um, into people that are dangerous along those lines. So like anything else, if I go to, I went to school in Chicago, I'm not going to certain parts of Chicago ever, whether I'm carrying a gun or not, it ain't happening. Same thing when you go there, you, 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 you know, we'd show you where to go. That's safe to get the mission done. I hear you. Now, I found out in talking to Tom before we started this interview that not only did we both graduate high school the same year, but we were both raised 10 miles apart. I was raised in Summit, New Jersey. He was raised in Newark, New Jersey, before his father got him out of there before <laughs> high school. So please tell us about your upbringing, your background. Were you always a conservative? And how did you get involved in activism? Because I was a Democrat till I was 47 years old. Black, what did I know better? You know, they, they're the party that represents us, whatever us is. And I always, you know, little people. That, and then I became a born again Christian. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. And that flipped really quickly. But I was 47. Well, uh, all of us. I mean, who in New Jersey wasn't a Democrat, right? <laughs> Especially in those days. And my family was very, very involved. I grew up in the I grew up in Tony Soprano's neighborhood. Mm -hmm. where that stuff actually happened. We're we're Sicilians. My my uh, grandparents came over from Sicily, and I had um, the honor of being at Ellis Island a few years ago. And I don't know if you've been there, Gary, but they have. This, no, I haven't. They've redone everything, but they maintain the existing original stairs, 12 stairs that go down and 12 that come up. And they're about eight feet wide. They're made out of granite, and they're all worn down. It, I got goosebumps because if you're – if your ancestors came in, they went down, up and down those stairs, and it was just pretty cool to see that. So I grew up in New Jersey, um, you know, Catholic family, Catholic Italian family. I believed in God. Got in high school, God went into the trunk of my car when I had a when I had needed a you know a flat tire. I pulled God out. Uh, he would be my flat tire repair guy. Any problem I had, then when it's over, I put him back. I get to college. I had kind of a dual uh, pull in my life. You know, you grow up where all the racketeers are and you see the caddies and you kind of move in that direction. But I also had a sense of justice and I wanted to go into the FBI. So I went to school to study law enforcement, did a degree in that. And during that, um, as a bit of a screwball, frat boy, um, I got involved, uh, not willingly, in a Bible study in my frat house. So, uh, and ours was Animal House down in Toms River, New Jersey. Uh, and um, after weeks of arguing with this little minister guy, because uh, I was a pretty good arguer, and, and he answered all my questions, all the tough questions I had, he answered. Then he starts asking me questions, 
I had no answers. No answers. No answers. And I'm a very logical person and I got to see stuff. And basically, um, one or two of my friends did this crazy thing and gave their life to Jesus. I thought they flipped out. And then all the pieces came together. And uh, I remember saying, if if I do what they're they're saying to do, give your life to Jesus, I'm giving up a penny and I'm gaining a million dollars. Amen. Amen. And eternal life. And, and that was 1972. And uh, I said, all right, if uh, uh, the sense of justice, I want to enforce the law. I need to study God's law. So I went to Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Very good school. Right. And then from there, I was going to go to law school. And I got involved in a, a course called apologetics. Mm-hmm. I went to a seminary in Denver to become an apologist. And in, in Denver, I started uh, a little Christian activism organization, 1980, and it's the same exact 501c3 that I run right now. All these years, I've been running the same thing. This is what I do. I fight bad guys and try to tell the truth and defend the truth of Jesus Christ. I hear you, and amen for that, and and, and God bless you that you got saved. Uh, you beat me to the punch. You were 72. I was 1997. It took a while. <laughs> but, but did people, uh, certainly before you were 47, they'd say, hey, man, dude, you got to give your life to Jesus. What did you say? OK, I thought I had given my life to Jesus because I grew up in the quote unquote black church. And I had everybody telling you that, you know, you can have the world and Jesus. You know, I was involved. I was a sports writer for Newsday and the New York Daily News for a lot of years. But I was a big party guy uh, and I was. It was a big, uh, and then I got in the music business, and and I was, you know, like you almost, you know, God, I, you, you put him in the, had him in the, in the, in the trunk of your car, uh, you know, I had him when I went to church uh, on Sunday, and then the other six days were mine, but that changed, but, uh, and the thing is, I think like with you and me, once. Once I really realized that I was lost and needed a savior, I really got immersed in it. But in fact, the greatest thing that I ever ended up doing was teaching Sunday school at a church out here in Syos at age seven to 12. It's, it's the, it was the greatest. I did that for several years. It was the most gratifying thing I ever did just to hear God on Sunday after those lessons say, well done, good and grateful servant. You know, so amen that we, we found that the truth and the light of what true life is about and this is part of it too because god through christ gave us a free country we want to keep it free right uh yeah i mean we we can we can we can develop this but look uh for everybody listening you're you're hearing both of us coming from from the same state but going two direction different directions but we're both talking about this one person jesus christ and whoever out there is listening i know gary there's there's people that were like us, um, just, mm-hmm. you know, the, the Holy Spirit was pulling, but they were fighting back. Hey, give Gary a call. Give me a call. We'll tell you there's no looking back, man. Once you make a decision to follow Christ, it, it, it's not a perfect life, but you have a perfect not person here. with you to make it through that life. And, and Gary, I bring a lot of people to Israel, you know, national security tours, mm-hmm. but we always go to um, to the Jordan, whoever wants to get baptized, baptized. I'll baptize them or Kevin Sorbo's with me, whomever. And uh, you ought to come on our trip next year and you've already been baptized, but you can make a recommitment of your life in the Jordan River, man. Then your life is complete. Michelle Terrace tried to get me to go with you guys on this last trip, you know, and I don't know. You guys, are, you had enough people. I think you ran out of people that you had. So like, Kevin was there because Kevin's been on the Kevin Sorbo has been on the show twice. So you had him with you on the trip. Uh, we had two trips. We had um, and I was on both of them. Uh, we had a uh, two week trip with only Christians um, and there were 80 people and Sorbo, he and, and Sam, Sam right. they were the hosts. And then uh, then we had the national security one where Jexit, Michelle, and United West hosted. We had 50 people on that. Yeah, that was maxed out. Um, actually, 60 people. Yeah. We maxed that out. Well, uh, but there's next year, man. You come. Yeah, because I want to. I really do. I want I want to go 
I, I want to go and see where my Lord and Savior, I, I want to see, I want, I want to go to the seas, I want to be in the area, I really want to see because, see, to me, I have gone every place that I basically wanted to go. Believe it or not, the one place when I was a sports writer, the one place I really wanted to go, I have no idea why I had a fascination with the Alamo. So when I finally got in San Antonio, got to San Antonio with the Knicks, um, and I go to see the Alamo, and I'm like, this is it because they didn't enshrine it. Of course, it's all broken down and there's some cannons and Bowie's knife is in there. There's stuff around, but there was a Woolworths across the street. They didn't enshrine it. It's like on a street corner. I'm like, this is it. This is all I <laughs> see. So no, I definitely Israel is, is, I don't want to do a bucket list, but if right now, if you ask where would I want to go that I still would like to do that. So we'll take that up again. Uh, Tom, before we go, and thank you for coming on and giving us this time, please tell people who aren't involved, please tell people who are listening to this that aren't activists, that are just hardworking, God-fearing, or people who love America, what they can do to get involved to try and help keeping this country from uh, this, what I would call, communist invasion. I'm a firm believer that uh, education, uh, information uh, properly communicated uh, creates a movement in the, in the brain and the, the psyche and the soul of human beings. And that movement is uh, positive because they're going in the direction of that which is true. So if you provide information and so it's going into their brain, then all of a sudden they become self-motivated. They don't need external motiv- motiv- motivation. Hey, go do something. Go do this. You don't do, they don't need that. They've been internally motivated by having an experience with that which is true. Then they're at a point where they go, what do I do with this? Now you have to activate them. And, uh, and, and there's nothing more beautiful than a person who has been motivated by the truth who sees a responsibility to to position them in an area that satisfies their spiritual gift and their desire to help other human beings. In this context, we have um, a comprehensive program. We have a man, Tom Holman. We have a movie, Death County and the River of Broken Dreams. It's about a county in uh, in Texas, 70 miles north of the border, where, where people are dying every day mm-hmm. to make that trek. The River of Broken Dreams, Rio Grande River. And uh, we have a movement. So the movement is once you get exposed to the material and you study and you talk with us, you want to do something, we sign you up and we're going to train you, educate you to uh, get involved in teaching others so that we have a pass-fail on Tuesday, November 5, 2024. The goal of this whole thing is to elect constitutionally-based pro-border security politicians all over the place, particularly a president, otherwise we're doomed. So to do that, go to our website, defendtheborder.org, defendtheborder.org, it's the name of Tom's book, Watch the movie. It's right there for free. Death County and the River of Broken Dreams. Join us. Contact us. We'll be in touch with you. And if people can donate, that's great. We're a C3. We're looking particularly, Barry, Barry, uh, Gary, um, we're looking. A friend of mine, Barry, came on uh, these trips with us and died a, a year ago. So um, and you remind me of him, but you're right. Not, and now you want me to come on the trip, right? Well, okay. <laughs> you know what happened? It's very, very sad. Oh, uh, to hear you, really? He, yeah. He, he spilled out of, uh, he died of a fentanyl, uh, overdose, believe it or not. Very, very sad situation, but we're looking for individuals to be executive producers with us to put in money and we'll take them on, on the border and Make them part of the whole movie. And uh, so contact us at uh, defendtheborder.org. Thank you very much for that. And before I ask you to tell people about United West and, and Defend the Border and where they can reach you, you brought up a, uh, one question I wanted to ask before. And you can address this for the American people, because to me, this is a duh. Don't the American people realize that the very people that want open borders 
They have borders around their places. Nancy Pelosi has a border around hers. You know, you have Catholic charities helping bring in all, they're helping place these people. There's a border around the Vatican. There's borders around, they all live in gated, oh, but we, no, 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 you gotta have that. Don't people see the hypocrisy of this? That goes back to how we started this, where they lost their logical mind and they do not see that they're violating their own viewpoint. I have a good friend down here. He's almost 90 years old. He's an activist, South Florida. And he goes to these gated communities. He actually put a form together and passed it out where uh, it it, it had all the residents um, signing. Nobody signed it, but it said, we want to be a community supporting the global movement. Therefore, we're going to we're going to take the front gate down to our gated community and remove it. We're going to invite the world's community into our gated right. community. We're opening our clubhouse and our swimming pool to anyone who wants to come in. He tells all these people to sign this thing. They go, "Are you freaking kidding me? Are you nuts?" Then he goes, uh, "People, what do you think you're doing to our border?" Mm-hmm. And, and he created an existential crisis, and the people go. Now you would think an honest person would go. You know what? You got a good point. I need to rethink my view. They just say, "F you! You're a racist." He's a Jewish guy, right? You're a racist. You're this. That's how they lost their logical mind. And look, we we have two countries within America right now, Gary. I think everybody sees that. Biden gets reelected again. We're going to have a bifurcation of this country that is going to result in a trouble, dark trouble on the southern border, because those border sheriffs and those border communities are not going to allow Joe Biden to bring seven more million people in. There's going to be problems and bloodshed down there. People trying to protect America when the federal government won't. We got to We got to move. We have to be victorious on the 5th of uh, November 2024. I hear you, Tom, and I'm going to take a shot at this. Is your 90-year-old friend, is his initials SS? No, but he's another. He (laughs) is Steve (laughs) Stern. He is tremendous. This is Alan Bergstein. Oh, okay, Uh, yeah, because Steve Stern has been on the show, and he's Jewish, and he's older, and I'm saying, I don't know if Steve would be going around uh, door-to-door doing that. That guy wears me out, man. He has Stern wears you out? Oh, he, he's got so much he's energy. All over the place. Unbelievable. God he bless. He'll, he'll be emailing me. I'm on this show. I'm on that. Hey, I'm on with Bannon. I'm on with that. I said, Steve, where do you find time to do all this? He contacted me today. You know, he contacts me all the time. Uh, he's part of our team. I know. Uh, you know, it's guys like that. Yeah, you, know, you and I are the same age. Um, and it's guys like that. T- almost 20 years older than us, still kicking ass. And, oh, and, big time. And yeah. you go, you know, I got aches and pains for all my stupid things I did all my life, you know. Um, and I go, I, I can't stop. When when Steve Stern or Alan Bergstein stop, then I'll stop. And you'll stop. Well, I'll stop when God just puts me, Amen. you know, takes me home. But until then, I will continue to fight the good fight. Tom, please tell people how to reach you and anything else you'd like to promote. Yeah, go to uh, Defend the Border. Very simple, defendtheborder.org. Everything is there, the whole campaign. It should be your go-to place on the border. You can contact me through there. And, uh, again, We exist on donations. Anyone could help. Uh, I'm a terrible, I'm a fighter, not a fundraiser. But, um, and shows like this, I mean, you've been doing for a long time. Phenomenal. Just three years. Just three years. Well, you know, um, three years. (laughs) I've had a hundred, I've been blessed to have 125 high profile guests. And you know who some of them are in three years is a blessing. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You you're doing amazing work. Um well, thanks. And Claire, Claire, you, you gotta get on Gary's show. You gotta get on. I said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I'm glad we did it, man, for sure. I am too, because I everybody, Michelle Terras, Claire, everybody, you know, has been saying and, and you know, time is everything. So I'm glad you came on now because this is a good time, you know, because a lot of people are starting to wake up and realize, hey, I don't I don't like what I see. 
you know, because they've had two and a half years of this stuff for a little bit more. And, and it's starting to, the stench is starting to go up the nostrils. I, I hope I hope this is going to lead to the right voting. Of course, if we can keep the election from, uh, uh, you know, the election integrity, that issue. And when we bring you back, we could talk about that. I'll make you one uh, uh, one offer. You ready for this? I'm listening. Next time I go to Jersey and I go, you know, once or twice a year, I still have relatives up there. Um uh, I call you. You meet me on Bloomfield Avenue in Newark, in the old neighborhood. Uh huh. And um, my my friend, whose father had his store, is running um, uh, Bloomfield Avenue and Sixth Street. Dicky D's. Uh, you can look it up. Dicky D's, the best Italian hot dogs in the world. The best ones. We'll meet there. I'll buy you lunch at Dickie D's in Newark, New Jersey. You got it. But I, when you said the best Italian, I thought you were going to say Chapino, because I'm a, I, I love Italian food, but I'm a Chapino, you know, lobster, shrimps, clam, mussel, and a garlic <laughs> sauce. I thought you were going to hit me with some real, but you got to hit me with a Jersey hot dog. But that would be dog, cool. Man. I'm down well, for it. Okay. We start there. We start there. You got it. Hey, tell the crew I said hi, and thank you for coming on. Everybody, Tom Trento. Thank you, Gary. I want to thank Tom Trento for his dedication and his courage to dive feet first into a critical situation that many people aren't even aware of. A country without borders isn't a country, folks. We've got to get this situation under control before it's too late. So thanks again to Tom and his crew for what they do and their willingness to put it over the airwaves in the hopes that we the people will listen, rise up and handle our business. This podcast is available for download at RadioInfluence.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. Hope to subscribe to it, leave a rating and a review. And be sure to tell your friends about the show. If you're a first time listener, hope you'll check out the podcast archive located on the page. All previous episodes are there featuring high profile guests, including Kevin Sorbo, Carrie Lake, Morgan Brittany, Diamond and Silk, Tom Holman. Claire Lopez, Ann Vandersteel, Michelle Terrace, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, Monica Crowley, Ben Carson, Judge Janine Pirro, Herschel Walker. That's all for now, friends. Thanks for joining us. So until the next time, this is your host, Gary Benford, saying God bless you, God bless your families, and God please bless America. America.